2024 has been really good so far in terms of news about 2D music projects focused in rock music. In this case, the Dig Rock franchise is back with new music. It is already May, so the first singles have already been released by all bands in this franchise. I hope you have checked those. If you haven't, there's a lot of good music in store for you to, to check. In this episode, let's talk a bit about Dig Rock as a franchise, the quality of their music, what you can expect from the vocals, and just give you a rundown of the new CD season that is going to kick off this summer. Let's kick off this episode of See You Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to Seoul Lounge, I'm your host Vanessa and in this episode let's talk about Dig Rock's third CD series, Break Time. So, the Dig Rock franchise is back and the news was announced basically in February 2024, which was two months after the Dear Vocalist franchise announced its comeback as well. So, this is good news for us fans of rock music and fans of 2D rock music projects because we have two really, really good genuinely good rock music projects here, active, and finally with new CD seasons, which was something that was worrying me last year, and finally those worries are out of the door. We have Rubio Leopard, Impish Crow and Hound Roar back for a third CD series, but before that they released their first singles, which was definitely something that I was not expecting for that to happen, because the franchise up until now was really focused on releasing those drama CDs with two or one new song. And that was the format for a long time, so I was not expecting them to suddenly change the format. But I'm open to changes, and especially for changes that actually benefit the fans. In this case, in case you are not the type of fan that enjoys the drama tracks and you want just the music, these first singles by all bands are the very first time that you get only the music when you purchase the CD, which is really awesome. And you may be thinking to yourself, but Vanessa, where do I get their music if I'm not in Japan? First off, when it comes to the singles and even to the, the CDs with drama tracks, it's really hard to get those. My suggestion is to get those officially from Ototoy. Ototoy is an online store focused on digital downloads, official digital downloads. So everything that you will be purchasing there, you are actually paying to the creators, you are paying to the Seiyuu, it is official. More legit than that, only if you purchase directly from the label, but the label doesn't sell directly the music to international fans, which is a pity. But you have that and it is an online or a digital format, more so than a physical one. But still, it's a good way to support the project and a good way for you to find their music. A side note though, because their music is not always available at the same time on Autotoy as it is released officially on other platforms. So. Do have that in mind when you go to Autotoy, maybe give it 2-3 months since the release or the official date of release to actually find the CDs there. They have a backlog in there, but not all CDs are there at the moment, which is something that you also have to be wary of. And this is something that, in my opinion, makes it a bit harder to get into the Dig Rock franchise as opposed to other 2D music franchises, and especially in comparison with other 2D rock music franchises. But other than that, you have awesome music waiting for you, so I feel that it is always best to actually purchase directly or as closest to the origin, and if you can actually support your favorites and your favorite groups or favorites to you, my choice is always to actually purchase the music. Do not download it and do not stream it, because streaming doesn't pay much to the CU and not at all to the projects. It's cheap change that is not going to pay anyone. You barely get a sandwich if you have a song uh, uh, streaming for 1000 times, so it's not really viable. It may sound to you, but it is not. But I've talked extensively about that on an episode of Seoul Lounge. If you can 
do check. It is a, an episode from, I believe, two years ago. So we are talking about an episode around the 30 to 50 mark. So you have to check between episodes 30 and 50. You will find something about how much, say, you are paid for their music, which is an interesting topic to talk about, but I've already covered it. So I'm not going to cover it again in this episode. Back to the topic at hand. We have all three bands releasing digital singles in March 2024, which is already in the past, and they came forward with interesting concepts. I'm not going to talk about the song specifically, because at the time that I'm recording this, in April, the franchise has yet to make their songs available on Ototoy. Notice what I said just a couple of minutes ago. So, in this case, Hound Roar appeared with Insanity, which is a really cool title for a band that is all about acid jazz, their sound is unpredictable, usually, and really fun and groovy at the same time, but it has a, a stylish vibe going on in there because of jazz music. I tend to say this, and I will say it again, jazz music is really stylish. In case you are looking for music that is really, really elegant, jazz music is your thing, or is going to be your thing. Better yet, when you have on the vocals for Hound Roar, Toshiki Toyanaga. So you have the best singer among Miles Sayu in here performing acid jazz, which is an unpredictable style of music. You couldn't get any better than this. They released the Insanity. The interesting thing in here for the, the digital singles or the singles was that it came with the title track, the instrumental track for that title track, and then it came with the bonus track, which comes from a live recording, which is to say it comes from the very first live show that the Dig Rock franchise held, basically, last year. And it is the live recording of Reincarnation. And if you know this song, you know it's going to be awesome. Because the song was already amazing in a recording. Imagine it in a live setting with Toshiki Toyanaga really giving his all when it comes to his energy on stage. It is going to be good. Then we had Ruby Leopard releasing Halation. This is the type of title that I was not expecting from them because it sounds too ethereal, too magical, too delicate, which is not really adjectives that I would associate with a band that is a bit risque in their lyrics, all about being sexy and really, really open about their emotions in a way that is almost made to blush you. So this is something that is really quite interesting in here, but Halation arrives here and I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily 100% surprised because the band has released before songs that had titles that wouldn't necessarily fit with their vibe or released songs with a, a style that did, didn't necessarily fit their vibe and their songs, interestingly enough, ended up being really amazing. Once again, we have Halation, the instrumental as well, and the live recording that we have in here is No Limit. Now, out of every single song that Ruby Leopard has released so far, No Limit is not necessarily one of my favorites, so I'm quite curious to see how Makoto Furukawa, who is on vocals here, actually tackled this song live, but it's not really a song that I would hold my breath for because it's not really one of my all-time favorites coming from Ruby Leopard. It's a good song, but not really an all-time favorite of mine. On the other hand, in closing these digital singles or the singles, is Impish Crow's One Wish. Another amazing singer on vocals we have here, Yumo Uchida as Tsugumi, and for Impish Crow we have something in here which is a bit different from the acid jazz that Hound Roar has and the hard rock sound that Ruby Leopard has, because Impish Crow is all about their power pop sound. Their sound is quite addictive, their music is really intense and energetic, and the lyrics are not really that complex, which lends a, a lot from pop music. Once again, we have the title track, One Wish, we have the digital or the off-vocal version, and then we have the bonus track is Grow from the live performance. Grow is a really cool song coming from this band, and I can't wait to listen to it in full, because I do know that Yamuchi is going to give an amazing show, he's quite energetic on stage, and when he performs as characters, he's even more energetic on stage, which is really a plus. So. After these, the third CD series is going to kick off. We have a story behind the third CD series. In this case, Impish Crow soared to fame after being selected for or to perform a main theme for an anime series, as expected from a band that performs power pop. 
and basically their twin vocals ended up gaining widespread attention. Meanwhile, Ruby Leopard, amidst preparations for an eagerly anticipated tour, continues to be a hot topic, as well expected. And despite resolving internal issues, because they have those, a sense of unrest lingers within Hound Roar. This is already showing a bit of conflict and a bit of focus on connections, which is something that carries over from what is happening in the drama CDs. In case you do not follow those drama CDs, you have also the managers appearing, you have Akane's brothers coming, which is also an interesting thing. Akane is voiced by Makoto Furukawa, and one of the brothers is actually voiced by Daisuke Ono, for example. So we do have really interesting things going on in here. The stories are all progressing and all are tied up in some way because they are all in the music scene and they know each other. So in some way, even some of them are fans of each other, which is really, really cool. Break Time is the title of the third season, kicking off in June, and it is going to be a set of consecutive releases. So we are going to have CDs in June, July and August. And Hound Roar is the first group to, to come forward, and they are going to release a CD in June titled Fragile. This is going in the same line as what I just described of the story, their bonds as a band are a bit fragile, and they still have to work on those. It ties up with the title of the song, so I'm quite curious to see what happens in here. At the same time, the CD is a traditional CD in the franchise, which is to say it comes with drama tracks and one song, we in this case, Fragile. The drama CD this time around is going to, be, is going to bring Tomokazu Seki to the cast, as well as Hound Roar's members, of course, and the manager. On the other hand, in July, Impish Crow arrives with a CD, which so far, at least at the moment of recording this episode, doesn't have a title for the song, but we already know that we have a new cast member. Aifarouz is going to join the cast for the drama tracks alongside, of course, Impish Crow's members and their manager. On the other hand, and wrapping up this third CD season, we have Ruby Leopard, basically the faces of the franchise, and they appear with a CD in August. Once again, at the time of recording this episode, we do not know which is going to be the song title. There are no previews whatsoever, but one thing we can be certain, Toshiki Masuda has joined the cast. And so far, this is the most excited I have been for anyone to join this cast. To sum it all up, the Deep Rock franchise is a 2D rock music franchise created by Team Entertainment in 2019. They are going to celebrate their 5th anniversary this year, which is quite important, and why I'm even more excited for this third CD series. At the same time, this is a franchise that mixes drama tracks with music, always. The drama tracks are not recorded with dummy head mic, like, for example, the Dear Vocalist is. So we have drama tracks uh, in which you are basically listening to a story unfold and you don't participate as a member of the story. At the same time, the Dig Rock franchise counts with three rock bands of different backgrounds and with a different sound. We have Ruby Leopard with Makoto Furukawa on vocals, we have Impish Crow with Yumuchi on vocals and we have Hound Roar with Toshiyuki Toyonaga on vocals. Ruby Leopard is all about hard rock, Impish Crow is about power pop, and Hound Roar is about acid jazz, which is a music genre that I love a whole lot. If you want to get in more depth about this franchise, I recommend you to visit handthatfeedshq.com and search for Dig Rock, because you are going to find the extended article about this franchise, each member and each band. It goes really in a lot of detail, so it is a really awesome read. It takes almost 5-10 minutes and you have everything you need to know about this franchise to see if it is worth getting into or not. The three singers in here are within my top four best singers among my LCU, so I'm quite pleased with what the Dig Rock franchise managed to bring to the table, which is three out of my four favorite singers among my LCU ever, which is quite impressive. So yeah, this franchise is awesome and you should check it. 
really. And this third CD series is quite exciting and can bring lots of new things and awesome things to the table. The fact that the franchise brought new Seiyuu to this franchise, and especially Seiyuu that are quite expensive to bring to any project, is basically a show that the franchise is going strong and they do not have any type of financial issues, which is a good thing because I was worrying about that in 2023 when the franchise was a bit on and off releasing their music and not releasing music as frequently as they should. As you can tell, I'm quite excited about this comeback because why would I even create a full-on episode about this franchise returning with a third CD series, right? We have three CDs. I would love to have more music coming from this franchise, honestly. I feel that three CDs are okay to expand the story, but when it comes to the music, I feel that this franchise is here for su such a long time. It's five years. And both bands, bear, uh, or basically all bands, barely have 20 songs to their name. It's weird. They have fewer songs than any other project out there with the same age, which is yet again weird. But then again, I prefer quality to quantity, so I will not complain that much. But since I love all three bands, you can understand when I say that I want more, right? So I'm really, really looking forward to this franchise to make a proper comeback with this third CD series. And I hope they have all of the success they deserve because this franchise is quite amazing and deserves your love. But enough about what I think basically about this franchise. Now tell me, what do you think about the Dig Rock franchise? Are you a fan of this franchise? Are you not? Is this your first time listening or basically listening to someone talking about this franchise? Do let me know that, I would love to, to know if it is actually your first time coming across this franchise and what we expect about this franchise. If you are actually like myself, a veteran in these and you already have listened to their music quite a lot of times, I would love to know which is your favorite band and why. I'm not going to ask the favorite vocalist, but your favorite band, because this says a lot about the three quite different music genres that each band has and how the Dig Rock franchise actually focused on giving different flavors of rock music to the fans, which is really, really awesome. So do let me know that in the comments on YouTube and on Spotify. And remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be, and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of Say You Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly mail Say You and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. If you are listening to this episode on a podcast listening platform, please consider following the podcast and leaving a review. Once again, leaving a review is really simple and helps other people find this podcast and fall in love with Mile Sayu artists and 2D groups. I'll return next week with another episode of Sayu Lounge. Do pay attention that the 200th episode of Sayu Lounge is going to be live on YouTube, so do head over to YouTube on May 31st at 3 p.m. GMT, which is the same time as this episode premieres every week. The episode is going to be recorded live. It's going to be recorded live. So the episode will not be available on Spotify at the same time because it is impossible. I am recording it live. So the, the episode 200 is going to appear on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts or any other streaming platform quite later in comparison to the live stream. So do head over to the Hand That Feeds HQ's YouTube channel. You find links in the description of this episode. So do head over there and watch the live stream if you can't wait for the episode or do wait for the episode to be uploaded on streaming platforms because it is going to be available on streaming platforms soon after. Not necessarily on the same day, but soon after. That's all about the updates that I have for you. The next episode is going to be a big one because the podcast is four years old. It has 200 episodes. This is big. This is ama an amazing achievement coming from a small podcast that when I created, I didn't even envision it going 
past the 20 episode mark and yet here we are on the 200th episode coming next week so do get excited about these i am quite excited about these but at the same time a bit worried that the live stream may not work as i want it to work because it is the very first time i'm going to do a live stream and i'm not experienced at all with live streams believe it or not so it is bound to to work in some capacity i don't know if it is going to work well or not that's a different story participate in the link that is in the description it is a link to leave me questions messages or anything that you would like to suggest for this podcast at least for me to cover in upcoming episodes for example so do head over there participate and if you want to join me join me on may 31st at 3 p.m gmt and that's all from me today and i'll see you guys soon